The Corsair Void Pro headset features comfortable microfiber, mesh fabric, and memory foam ear cups, custom-tuned 50mm neodymium drivers with Dolby Headphone 7.1 surround support, and a unidirectional noise-canceling microphone with LED mute indicator. Available in RGB and wireless trim too, so click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Welcome everyone to Arctic Panther Build Log Part 3. I have a couple major things to get done today. One is going to be to focus on some wiring. I got to get some sleeving done on the uh, pump reservoir. And then I also have to fix at least one supplemental 4-pin CPU power cable from the power supply. And I don't have to sleeve one of those. So I might, I'm going to start off with some cable sleeving probably. And also, of course, going to start bending the tubes and hopefully get the loop filled up. But before I get to any of that, I have like a little pile of boxes back here and I have some like accessories, some extra stuff that I've been collecting. Some of it I have gotten from vendors, but most of it has just been me impulse buying stuff on like performance PCs and Amazon. So I'm gonna go over a few of those things, but it's still in the boxes. So let's start by taking them out of the boxes. Oh yeah, and I also need to blame you guys uh, for a lot of this stuff too, because a lot of this is some responses to stuff that you guys said in the comments for last video. But anyway, ignore most of the stuff on the right side up here. This is uh, this is the power supply, which I'm going to be doing a, an unmasking of in just a few minutes, uh, and then sleeving, cable sleeving stuff, and then that's just a random stash of stuff I've been working with. Anyway though, starting from the top, Primo Flex, just some uh, flexible tubing from Primo Chill, because I realized I didn't really have any of this and um, when you need some flexible tubing and all you have is hardline stuff it's nice to have some flex tubing. Uh, from Mayhem's I have two things this is the blitz cleaning kit just nice to have that for cleaning out stuff if you need to do a really thorough cleaning it's a full system uh, I've never used it before but I've read about it and stuff and it does a really good job so and then also from Mayhem's I have a, a pH testing kit um, which may come in handy in the future. Impulse buys yay good to have this doing here this is this is for nori hold on Nori, right, what's this is that a new bone oh good girl okay come on again sit good girl sit pretty sit pretty good girl there you go yeah i could run away and make out with it hero's interested too but hero uh, Hero doesn't like chew toys. He doesn't really have many teeth to chew them with, so there it is. Uh, anyway, I'm getting distracted. How can I not just look at her? Okay, back to the thing. Her old one is uh, not doing very good. Moving along. Uh, this I already had. This is from X XSPC, and it is a it's just a cable cable chopper. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it the chopper. It's very sharp. Uh, I tested it out already. Does a really good job cutting the PETG really cleanly, so um, it helps speed things along. All right, I got a set of micro files, needle files, I guess is what these are called. Uh, file a lot of this. Fi file a lot of this. File a lot of this stuff under would have been convenient to have already, but now I have them. So there you go. Big old stack of sandpaper because sandpapers. Apparently, I'm into sandpaper now. Uh, got this kind of last minute. I wanted to have a temperature sensor, and I completely forgot to order one. So I needed to find something on Amazon that was going to get here quickly. So this is a G1 quarter plug with 10K sensor. So the sensor is actually in the plug there, so I can just uh, put that cap anywhere in the system that has water from the system up against it, and I'll be able to tell the temperature. And then the other side, I can just plug into one of the thermal uh, probe connection points on the motherboard. Uh, the box underneath is a four terabyte WD hard drive because I needed to have a $35 or more order to get this to ship quickly in four terabyte hard drive, right? All right, this was sent directly from Primo Chill. Let me see if I can swish it around. And this is a reaction to Jay's video on this. So thanks Primo Chill for sending this over. This is their view fluid. Uh, still, it's still in development, but um, it looks really cool. It's got kind of that shampoo effect. So I'm gonna maybe maybe test that out and see how it looks in there. Also, also it's a Primo Chill order, so it came with Sour Patch Kids. Okay, whoever saw my sander before, it wasn't a real sander. Now I have an actual sanding block. That should be convenient and very helpful. Got some tap magic stuff since I've been drilling into metal 
useful to have this for lubricating things and making sure it doesn't um, get too hot and keep getting a clean cut. I got some nitrile gloves. Uh, since I've been complaining about getting fingerprints on things, I can wear the gloves now and that's uh, super helpful for a wide variety of things. I'm really, I, I've been meaning to get those for quite some time. Um, come back to those in a second. I wanted a funnel and they have G1 quarter funnels. This one's from Coolance, uh, the liquid funnel with adapter. So it's got a G1 quarter threading on the bottom and it's kind of squishy. Smaller than I thought it was going to be. But it also comes with a little tube that you can feed down in there um, in order to let the air out. So if you don't have a place where air can escape, this can be very helpful while filling your loop. I see the idea is that I'll, I'll just stick it right there, right? Screw it on there and be good to go. Pour the, pour the fluid right in. Now this I didn't buy. This this I've had, it's it's my pin extractor, which I've used for um, modding my, my power supply over here, for example. Um, but since these are delicate and they can break, and since I actually wanted uh, the pin extractor for Molex, we just got a kit that comes with the Molex pin extractor, as well as pin extraction tools for several other types of plugs in the PC, including a replacement or a backup for um, my standard PCIe pin extraction tool right there, so that's nice to have. Speaking of pins, wow, these are standard Molex uh, ATX PCIe power pins, uh, the same type of pins that are used in pretty much all the um, motherboard, uh, EPS, and PCI Express power plugs. These are really expensive for some reason. They, I feel like I should go and buy these when, uh, when I'm in Taiwan next time and get them really cheap. And anyway, I have a set of those now. So those, that's a backup in case I break a pin uh, as I'm doing a bit of the modding here. Also, I didn't have one of these. I borrowed uh, the one from, from Kyle last time. This is a crimping tool so that when you're actually attaching these pins to the cables, use the crimping tool to crimp them in place. And that means that I can basically make any cable I want of any length I want and replace pins on broken pins on the end and that kind of thing. So that should be really helpful. And finally finishing out my tools, uh, I got a center punch, which is very helpful for drilling into metal and starting out stuff. And then, uh, okay. Stepped, drill bit, set. Yay. Uh, so many people, as I was drilling the holes for the uh, fill and drain ports, on the Define R5 over there in the last video. We're like, Paul, you need a step drill bit set. So, or at least at least a step drill bit. I got a full set. I can go up to all the way up to uh, one and three eighths inch. And they're like cobalt or something. And they come with this case that makes you feel like it's totally worth the money. Cause look, I mean, it's got a nice fancy case. Uh, anyway, and that is all the stuff that I just bought kind of recently. So I'll post links to all this stuff down in the video's description if you uh, are interested in any of them. And let's move on and start some cable sleeving. I'm attempting to harvest a, a four pin CPU p uh, connector from this old modular cable and I'm not doing a very good job at it. Pretty much mangled this one and got a piece of it, a piece of it stuck inside so I'm seeing if I can do the other one instead. So I want to get this power supply situation resolved and uh, here's my dilemma. I need another four pin supplemental CPU power connector, the ATX 12 volt as it's more commonly known. Uh, my problem is for my outs on the back here, uh, everything that's hardwired is hardwired. I, I can't, I, there's, no, there's nothing else available there. I've got two of these white uh, eight pin outputs and those are actually made for ATX 12 volts and PCIe. But what I did in the original build was I took my two PCI Express power cables for my graphics cards because I have two of them, two eight pins coming that are hardwired and then I have two more that I made the cables for here and those are going to be using up those two plugs. So I have all my peripheral connectors here and this is a, you know, it's a big old power supply. It can handle the, the juice, it's, or it's got the juice that it needs, but it's got a single 12 volt rail too. So no matter what my 12 volt connectors are in here, 
uh, I will be connecting to that 12 volt reel. Now quick disclaimer, this is not meant to be a tutorial or anything like that, so please don't go poking around with your power supply wiring and circuitry unless you know at least a little bit what you're doing. Don't take my word for it. But basically what I did was I took one of my peripheral cables that I made last time, because I, I know I did it right the first time, these were functional, and I, I back traced the connectors here for the SATA connection points, because SATA has a 12 volt, 5 volt, and a 3.3 volt, and I traced that back to the actual six pin connectors uh, uh, for the peripherals on there. And I figured out, according to that, I've got two grounds, 3.3, 5 volt, and 12 volt. And I want that 12 volt, and I want two 12 volts. And I'd rather not go splicing uh, off of a single one because kind of the point of the 18 gauge uh, wires going to each 12 volt rails, each one can only support a certain amount of amperage and uh, you don't want to go over that. So splicing them isn't the best solution. So first to answer question one, because there are pins in all six of the, each of these uh, slots there, uh, which, yeah, there's pins in all of them. So mystery unused pin by any of the per peripheral cables. What is that? If that's another 12 volt, maybe I can just connect up to that. So I've got my black lead connected to a ground. Power supply is now on because I've got it hot wired. And uh, just to double check my chart, uh, the top right, should be 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts, good. Uh, the bottom left should be our 12 volt, cool, 12.3. Can be a variance of about uh, uh, five plus or minus 5%, uh, that's pretty standard. And then five volts should be bottom right. There we go, there's the five volt. And then bottom middle, uh, that's a no, that's a no juice. That's probably just another ground or it might just be a dummy not connected to anything because right now we're getting like 30, f it's climbing. All right, this is getting my, beyond my knowledge of explaining that, but basically I can't use that. I can't use that bottom extra connector. The upshot here is that I'm gonna need to use two of these peripheral outs to go into my single four pin uh, power connector, but that's, that's okay. Now I have three peripheral cables that I made originally that I don't really need so much anymore. I only really need a Molex connector for the pump in there. So these I'm probably just gonna set aside and save. I'll use uh, some of the original cables that I still have salvage er, to pull the, the caps off of that. And then, and then sleeving, yes, all right. Uh, sleeving cables, here goes. All right, so I've made the weirdest four pin uh, ATX CPU power plug ever. Uh, it goes into two of those peripheral cables into the power supply on the power supply side. The uh, plugs are reversed on each of these. If you look at the colors, just because I wanted the, the plug on top, which you might be able to vaguely see through the top of the computer to be alternating kind of like that, you know? So aesthetics, of course. But two plugs on the power supply side, four pins on this side, Let's give, a, let's give a quick test. So the two top ones should be 12 volts and the two bottoms sh should be ground. 12 volts, yay. 12 volts again, yay. Let's try the other ground. All right, 12 volts. And 12 volts. Looks like we're good.
and here is my completed sleeves uh, cabling for my DDC pump. And this is the part I'm least enthusiastic about. I was not, I need some like uh, wider gauge heat shrink uh, because this was not wide enough. I tried to work it all the way up there um, to get to the end, but it just, it gets wider there because I'd already put some other heat shrink down there. So that's as far as I got. It's not very clean right where it meets the pump. That's going to be facing the back. So. I'm okay with it. Also, this huge shrink comes out a little bit further than I would have wanted. But again, that's it's going to be hidden, so no no big deal. I did two wires per sleeve uh, to keep things just a little bit tidier. I went with all black mainly because like that's what I have the most of left over now. And then uh, here's my two end plugs. I did replace the uh, white caps that were on there before with black. And I used some heat shrink, stretched it out to go around the end of that one because that will be somewhat visible plugged into the motherboard and then the Molex plug on the other side also replaced with a black cap and again some not the prettiest heat shrink done on there to cap things off but hold things in place and now I think I can finally if I install my power supply yay power supply progress so some last minute logistics before things get too crowded in there because I need to make sure everything's plugged in. I've got front panel connected already, uh, USB and all that good stuff, uh, as well as power reset. Now what I've got to worry about are fans. Um, so I have, I was gonna have a bunch of these little splitters, or at least a, a few of these little splitters, but I ended up only needing one. There's actually seven fan headers on this motherboard. So two of them are right down here and these two fans are plugged into that. Two of them for the CPU in the top left. I'm going to plug those two into that. There are three in the lower right hand corner. So the two front fans are going to go into, well one front fan is going to go in one of those and then I'm going to do a splitter off one of those for the, this fan as well as the bottom intake fan. That will leave one more and that's a pump header fan down there and that one's going to connect up to the PW, PWM plug for the pump. I also realized I have my ROG SLI bridge here which uh, lights up of course and that has a, a separate a uh, little cable that comes off of it and I completely lost track of that cable and I thought that the entire build was going to be ruined but fortunately I found it at the last minute and it has a, a, a splitter in the end so it doesn't actually eat up an entire RGB out on the motherboard so I can plug it in and then also plug in an RGB strip to it so get an RGB strip set up to be at least down here in the bottom um, but there's also that digital RGB header I don't have a digital RGB LED strip yet, but I am going to take the cable for that because there's a special uh, cable for it that only has three pins. So I'm going to plug that in and have that wired up going to the back. So if I do get one of those digital RGB strips, I can plug it in and I won't have to worry about accessing that header on the motherboard. So once I get the RGB wires wired up through back there, which uh, I'm going to start actually getting some glue gunning. Oh no, it's dripping. Oh, that's horrible. Damn it, glue gun. It's like boogers just got on my newly sleeved cable, so that's, that's not cool. Okay, sorry. So uh, because this little plug right here in the cable comes off at a really weird kind of inconvenience spot aesthetically, I'm just going to kind of fold it back here and use my glue gun to hold it in place. Hopefully. I'm sure this is standard operating procedure. Oh, that's too much. It's okay. I folded it.
So the threading inside the fill port is different than the threading. It's This is G1 quarter, this is just a, a, a thicker gauge threading for the fill port so I can't use my fancy filler upper guy. Plan B. Had my first leak almost immediately, that will teach me to uh, go forward without putting paper towels down in case of leaks, but it was the cap that I had on the reservoir pump right there, and although aesthetically pleasing, these black caps from EK should only really be used to cap off flat GM1 quarter fittings, whereas this one's recessed, so um, it wasn't sealed right there and it started dripping down. I have paper towels ready now though, so let's continue. So, look at that. The flow indicator is flowing. So guys, let me, I, I, need, I need to wrap up this video. This, this video has uh, taken more like three days as far as the actual amount of work I've put into the build. Uh, of course, a lot of that had to do with filming it and whatnot, and also overcoming obstacles and dilemmas. Uh, I've learned some special important things. I need to give a shout out to Richard, AKA Darth Beavis. Um, when it comes to bending this thicker stuff, the thicker uh, 16 millimeter PETG tubing, uh, it's just a bit more challenging. You have to warm up a bit more of it and everything and his video and just actually watching him do it Just as far as as how aggressive he is with getting the heat on there as long as you're careful Of course to avoid bubbles and everything was super helpful. So th thanks Richard uh, for that video on that I'll post a link to that one in, in the description um, Beyond that I did discover a new technique that I developed or I, I have no idea if this is a normal technique or not but it's basically that as I'm bending, when, when, you know, when it's got the insert in there and everything and it's warm and I'm bending and if it starts to bubble up or something like that, I was taking one of these soft cloths, basically just wrapping with it and like holding it. So I was like squeezing the bubble back down with my hand and then waiting for it to cool off a little bit. And I was actually able to salvage several pieces that way, um, which, was, which was useful because when you're bending PETG tubing, it's a very fine line to go from this is an absolutely vital, integral part of my build that I must protect now at all costs, to this is a piece of scrap plastic that I'm now throwing away and I hate. This bend was what uh, basically killed my evening last night because I had had everything set up. I, I, I got all the bends done, I had them all in place, I just didn't have the fitting caps on all of them. So I went to do that really quick last night, finish it up, and then I was going to pour some water in because I promised you guys that I'd have water in it by the end of today's video. This was what I called my J-Bend, and I had actually replaced it right down there. And it looked it looked pretty cool when it was in there. Um, it helped me not use quite as many fittings to get this vertical uh, part right here. But when I attempted to actually put the cap on the end, I uh, just, just didn't want to go in there, and that's because this is part of the bend right there, and so the uh, uniformity of the roundness of the tubing had been warped, and therefore the cap wouldn't go on. So. I tried to salvage it, started sanding it down and whatnot, and eventually I was just like, ah, I hate it now and it sucks, so I had to scrap that piece and go back to my original plan of using a few adapters on there. Now, I have water in it, as you guys can see. It's percolating, it's bubbling a little bit. You can hear uh, the pump. This is a DDC pump. It's, it's a good pump. DDC pumps make a little bit more noise than the D5, so I'm getting used to that. Beyond that though, uh, it was mostly leak free except for a little cap on the uh, pump reservoir down there that I had to replace to get that to fit in there. Of course this is just distilled water in there right now, I'm just going to let it run and do some leak testing and make sure there's no leaks. And then for part 3 I have lots of things still to do of course. Several of you noticed that my cables need some training, I'm still in the process of doing that and I still have more work to do there. But I needed to get water in this system. I can't do a part three of a water-cooled build and not actually have water in the system. So, good. Water in the system. But I guess when it comes down to it, my goal was really just to get water in the system for today's video, as I promised you guys. So, uh, I've done that. I hope you guys are liking the look of it so far. I'm pretty stoked with it. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I got going on here so far. If you guys are happy too, if you think it's looking good, hit the thumbs up button on your way out, of course, and leave me a comment in the comment section. I've been getting a lot of feedback from you guys on this build and it has been impacting my decisions in certain areas, so uh, please keep that coming. Thanks again for watching this video, guys, and we'll see you next time.